All right, here we're going to approach a stoichiometry problem using a method called mapping. So this is different than fence posting, but it gets the same results. So feel free to try this if you want. So in this problem, we are told that we have 40 grams of N2, and we're trying to find the grams of NH3 that can be made with that. So the way mapping works is you always write the number that goes with that chemical under that chemical, which makes sense. So 40 grams of N2, I'm going to write 40 grams of N2. Now the other thing is we write grams directly under the chemical and if we were ever to write moles we would write them further below grams um, like down here. One way to think of that is that moles live underground. So we would write grams in this spot we would write moles in this spot. So we're looking for grams of NH3 so we're looking for this value here. So we have a starting point 40 grams of N2 and an ending point however many grams of NH3 that makes. This H2 doesn't really play a significant role in this problem. We're just assuming there's plenty of it, which we'll get into later. So we just kind of ignore that for this problem. We're trying to get from grams to grams. Now, one thing we can't do is we can't say that 40 grams will make 80 grams. That only works for moles. So one mole of N2 will make two moles of NH3, but 40 grams will not make 80 grams. So the way you do this problem is you have to first convert grams of N2 into moles of N2. And then when you get moles of N2, you'll bring it over here to moles of NH3. And then you can bring it up to grams of NH3. So it's a three-step problem, and we call this sort of mapping. So when you're in moles, you can go left or right between any two chemicals without an issue. Um, but you have to get there. So how do I get from grams of N2 to moles of N2? I have to find out what is one mole of N2 weigh. So I'll consult my periodic table, one mole of N2 is 28.028 grams of N2. If I look on the periodic table, there are two of them. So I'm going to multiply this by one mole over 28.02 grams. So in other words, one mole is 28 grams. If I have 40, then we always want to make sure this makes sense. I have one point, and I'm going to try not to round too much here. I'll round at the end, 1.428 moles. So 40 grams of N2 is 1.428 moles. How many moles of NH3 can that make? So what we do is look at the numbers. There's effectively a 1 here and a 2 here. So for every 1 N2, I can make 2 NH3s. So I'm going to be multiplying here by 2 over 1 to make this larger. So you always make a fraction out of the numbers up here. So 1.428 times 2, that will make 2.856 moles of NH3. And then I want to know, okay, how many grams is that? So I've got to find out what does NH3 weigh. Now be careful, you don't look at 2NH3, you already use the 2 to get over here, just look at NH3. So you ignore, sub, you ignore numbers out front, but you count subscripts. So NH3, 1 mole of NH3, if we add up the weight from the periodic table, is 17.04 grams. So for every mole, there's 17.04 grams. So we're going to convert, so every 1 mole is 17.04 grams. Again, see if this makes sense. One mole is 17 grams, what is 2.8 moles? So it should be a bigger number. So 2.856 times 17.04, I get 48.67. So 40 grams of N2 can make 48.67 grams of NH3, assuming there's plenty of hydrogen available. And the reason this works is because hydrogen is much lighter so it doesn't add a lot to the substance that we're making here when we go and do this. But bottom line, map this out. When you go from grams to moles, you're using molar masses. So either 28, because it was the mass of N2, or 17, which is the mass of NH3. When you go left to right, you use the coefficients to do that. So let's do another problem. So again, the first thing you want to do is map it. So it says, how many grams of P2O5 can be made? So we say, where is that? That's P2O5. I want this for my final answer. That's where I'm going. With 3.54 moles of O2. So O2 is going to be under O2. But 3.54 doesn't go directly here. This is where grams goes. It goes down here. So I'm going to write 3.54 moles here. So i got to get from here up to here. So again, what I do is I first go to moles of this chemical. So you always want to go from moles to moles. And I probably shouldn't have drawn that arrow so large. So I'll make the box. So I want to do that, and then I'm going to go up to grams. So how many moles of P2O5 can be made with this much O2? Well, every 5 O2 can make 2 P2O5s. So you're going to multiply by a fraction that will make this go from a 5 to a 2. That will make it smaller. So your options are 2 over 5 or 5 over 2. 
2 over 5 will make it smaller. So 3.54 times 2 over 5, I get 1.416. Again, I'm waiting to round, which should make sense. You get less. If you've put 5 in, you get 2 out, you should get less. Now, how many grams is that? Well, I have to find the molar mass of P2O5. So i got to add that up. And 1 mole of P2O5, so if I add up 2 P's, so 30.97 times 2 plus 16 times 5, it's 141.64 grams. So 1 mole is about 140 grams. So what's 1.4 moles? So that means there's 141.64 grams per mole. So I'll multiply that times 1.416, and I get 200, about 200.99 grams. And that's, again, how we approach these problems. So notice that when you go from moles to grams, you're essentially multiplying by the molar mass because you'll cancel your mole units. When you go from grams to moles, which we didn't do in this problem, you'll essentially divide by your molar mass. But just make sure your conversion makes sense uh, whenever you do these. So that is stoichiometry using the mapping method. So uh, use that if you think that works better for you. So until next time, I am Derek DeNova. Have a delightful day.